please welcome Gabe Gary. I deserve that. <laughs> a lot of people here. A lot of whites. <laughs> oh, it's all right, I do really well with the whites. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, this is an insane thing that's happening. Um, thank you so much for essentially gambling with your Saturday. <laughs> None of you know if this is gonna be a good show or not. I won't even watch a movie on Netflix unless it has at least 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. You guys paid for this. You're really brave. Maybe we should bang pots and pans outside for you at seven o'clock. Uh, it's a big weekend, not just because of what's happening right now, but I just quit my job. Parents real happy about that. <laughs> and it was tough because I actually liked my boss, so I didn't know how to tell her I was leaving. She just casually mentioned one day, she was like, oh, the next two weeks of weather is gonna be really bad. And I was like, I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> I'm really glad you mentioned that. <laughs> Very specific amount of time. <laughs> And getting a job is hard. A company told me they turned me down because I expressed negative feelings about my current position. I was like, yeah, that would explain the job application. <laughs> Do you have tons of applicants? Like, you know, things are going a little too well. <laughs> I've been sitting down to pee. Ladies, you got another ally. <laughs> Fellas, quit pissing on the floor. It's gross. I've been sitting down to pee for a few weeks now. I haven't had to clean my bathroom in months. Every piece of furniture in my house is a conversation piece, but the conversation every time is just, my grandma died and we had to get this shit out of her house. <laughs> She's not actually dead. She has dementia, which is like a thousand times worse. <laughs> but it's fine. She doesn't even know it's gone. <laughs> every time she comes over, she feels right at home. <laughs> I really like movies. I like everything. Horror, drama, comedy, ass, big tits, milk. You know, <laughs> I'm not picky. You're shaking your head. You into more Asian stuff? <laughs> I get it. Less is more. <laughs> I really like going to the movies, but the movie's not even the best part about going to the movies. The best part is the popcorn. That's kind of how I feel about blowjobs. Don't get me wrong, I like the blowjob, but I'm there for the thumb in my ass. That's right. If I'm talking to you, I don't care who you are or what we're talking about. Just know the only thing on my mind is how do I get those thumbs in my ass. If there are any doctors here tonight, I would like to schedule a colonoscopy. <laughs> I really like actors. I like Kurt Russell. I just watched Tequila Sunrise. He made it in the 70s. <laughs> He's hot. <laughs> I get it. Now I get why my mom used to always tell me she wanted to sit on his face. <laughs> she 
She's gross. <laughs> she gets from her mom, but her mom likes Jason Momoa. Aquaman. Every time she watches that movie, I swear to God, he could talk to her underwear. <laughs> because it's underwater. <laughs> because Aquaman makes my grandma's pussy. <laughs> Just soaking wet. <laughs> I never have to say that last part, but I like saying it. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg beat up two Vietnamese men on the same day. <laughs> when I told my friend that, he asked me if Mark Wahlberg was in Vietnam. <laughs> I was like, no, because over there, they're just called men. <laughs> My aunt refuses to travel to Vietnam because she doesn't want to go anywhere where she has to take pills just to eat the food. I was like, Aunt Debbie, you can't even show up to Thanksgiving without barring out on Xanax first. <laughs> I used to travel for work. I was in sales. I sold a little bit of marijuana. And then I got drug tested. And for the first time in my life, I thought, I should probably study. <laughs> I bought fake piss and took a bunch of NyQuil the night before so I could wake up on time for the drug test. And if I knew how fucked up you could get off NyQuil, I never would have been smoking weed in the first place. <laughs> Felt like the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Growing up, my mom had me tested for autism. Because she thought I might have been on the spectrum. And when I asked her how I did on the test, she said I passed. I don't know what that means. I did used to carry around a pocket Bible because I liked the sound the pages made when I flipped them. So if I'm not autistic, I'm at least going to hell. <laughs> I'm 25, so I'm technically in my mid-20s, but it feels like they're just starting because I spent my early 20s in college. What a waste of fucking time that was. <laughs> we drank and sometimes worked. <laughs> That's normal life in any good country. I went to art school because I'm really good with money, and some kid from my high school asked me, aren't you afraid they're gonna turn you into a fag? Do you know how hard it is going to school every day with people that are gay and transgender? It's actually not hard at all. <laughs> it's exactly the same as going to school literally anywhere else. It's actually better, because there's no better place to throw up on a Thursday morning than a gender-neutral bathroom. <laughs> when you graduate college, everybody says, congratulations, welcome to the real world, which is not what I wanted to hear. What I wanted to hear was, congratulations, keep waking up at noon, because <laughs> I like to party. My aunt told me if I ever got into trouble, I could call her and she'd come, no questions asked. And that turned out to be a lie, because as soon as she would show up, she'd start asking me if I had any more Xanax. <laughs> we did this really messed up thing in college where anytime there was a natural disaster, we would get drunk to the theme of that natural disaster. <laughs> Earthquake in Haiti, we're making martinis. Shaken, not served. <laughs> Tornado warning, get the blender. <laughs> Back in 05 when Katrina hit, we partied so hard, we ended up on the roof. <laughs> I 
I'm balding. But I talk to bald people like I'm already bald. I just don't want to suffer alone, you know? I assume this is how Puerto Ricans feel when they say the N-word. I'm not really part of the community, but no one's gonna tell me to stop. And even if they do, I probably won't. <laughs> I'm balding and it sucks because I just learned how to take care of my hair, which isn't easy for guys. Every Google result, every commercial for hair care is women's hair care. The guys at the barber shop didn't know anything either. I had to go to a salon to figure it out. And it turns out everybody should just use the women's stuff. It's been used longer, it's more effective, and until men care about hair care, men's hair care won't be popular. If we ever can figure out how to get men to care about hair care, maybe we can figure out how to get women to watch the WNBA. <laughs> the sky looked pretty good last year. But Kelsey Plum and the Aces, they might be able to do it. Not a single person here has a goddamn idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's it gonna take? Do the players need to start sleeping with Kardashians? Will you watch them? <laughs> yeah, some people don't like that joke. Usually white women. <laughs> you know how they like to get worked up. <laughs> are you, if, if you're mad, what are you gonna do? Start watching? Yeah, that'll really show me. <laughs> you want the ratings to go up? Let trans athletes play. Yeah. LeBron with the pussy? Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch that game. I love basketball. I tried talking hoops with the ladies at the salon. They didn't even know there was a women's league. When they found out, they were just happy the girls got to play ball. I did finally find a barbershop I could talk basketball with. The only thing I had to do was download the cash app. <laughs> If you don't get that joke, it's because you're old, or white, or both. Start hanging out with people that don't look like you. How about that? Listen, guys. I got plenty of time left. Whatever you think of me now, it's gonna get worse. Does anybody watch RuPaul's Drag Race? Woo! Relax. <laughs> what if it was an actual drag race? Yeah. Would the drag queens be good or bad drivers? Bad. Like, I said relax. <laughs> like if your son was a drag queen and you needed him to pick you up from the airport, would you want him to pick you up before he went to work or after? I know I sound like an asshole, but I had to pick my dad up from the airport. Couldn't stop screaming about how dangerous it is to drive in high heels. Do we get the joke? At night, I wear women's clothing. What's my drag name? Lemon Lotion. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a rapper. My rap name was just gonna be Lotion because I'd be white and smooth. <laughs> like moisturizer. They say cum is a good moisturizer. <laughs> Have you heard that? That's what they say. I asked my dermatologist if that was true. He was like, what? No, I just thought you liked it. <laughs> My insurance covers facials. <laughs> Yours doesn't? Step it up. Maybe that's why massage therapists have such nice skin. Speaking of immigrants. When the Europeans were coming over in the 1900s or whenever the fuck they came over, uh, they saw the Statue of Liberty. That's a very good sign that you're going in the right direction. Mexican immigrants, 
They see Texas. <laughs> Just a bunch of people that sound like Matthew McConaughey. And they still want in. <laughs> Let them in. The only time I go to Texas is on my way to Mexico. We gotta stop acting like the South is some crown jewel we gotta protect from immigrants. I've been to Cincinnati. <laughs> It could use some flavor. <laughs> and I don't know if you've heard, but the South is a little racist. And I'm not saying that the North isn't racist. What I'm saying is, if you accuse somebody in the North of being racist, they'll say, no, I'm not. If you accuse somebody in the South of being racist, they'll say, roll tide. <laughs> I was at a gas station down there. There was a poster at the gas station that said, if you voted for Obama, fill up your Prius somewhere else. <laughs> I read that, I was like, Jesus Christ. I had to hop back in my Prius and go down to the next gas station. <laughs> I was at a bar in Nashville, Tennessee. They were selling t-shirts that said, if you kneel for the national anthem, go to a different bar. I didn't like that. I wanted to burn the shirt, but it was a Nike t-shirt, and I didn't want to send any mixed signals. <laughs> the South is different, man. Like, Southern hospitality is a thing, but as a Midwesterner, I'm hesitant to accept it. Like, somebody invited me to their home, and I didn't know if it was for a home-cooked meal or to, like, kill me <laughs> and turn me into a home-cooked meal. <laughs> the only place I really feel comfortable down there is Waffle House. Eggs and cigarettes, baby. <laughs> Just like mama used to make. <laughs> Waffle House does birthdays. I saw a Waffle House waitress take a lit cigarette and stick it right in a girl's stack of pancakes. She said, happy birthday, darling. I called the waitress over. I was like, Mabel, come here. I didn't know her name. I was like, Mabel, come here. Uh, it is all three of our birthdays today. We don't have any pancakes. We just get those cigarettes to go. <laughs> Thank you so much. I drove through a town called Cuba, Mississippi. There are a total of two buildings in Cuba, Mississippi. The first one is labeled Cuba Gas Station. The second one is labeled Cuba Restaurant. If you walked out of your house tomorrow and the only two buildings you saw were labeled Cleveland Gas Station, <laughs> in Cleveland restaurant, you would kill yourself. <laughs> I do count that as a suicide joke going down the list of topics that I'm not supposed to talk about. But don't worry, I don't have any abortion jokes because I'm not a woman, all right? I can't have it all. <laughs> Ladies, you really got screwed with that one, didn't you? Women can have it all was definitely a man's idea. <laughs> because before that, things were pretty split. Men went to work, and women did literally everything else. And then the women were like, well, we want to work too. And the men were like, okay. You're still going to do everything else though, right? <laughs> I'm not learning that. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> Probably all day. That's what lions do. You know what we call them? The king. <laughs> older women are cougars. And I like older women. And when I say older, I mean <laughs> older, older. 31, 32 years old. <laughs> More women should date younger. Men do it all the time. Leonardo DiCaprio breaks up with his girlfriends the second they turn 25. And don't act like you wouldn't take him up on that. I would. What's eating Gilbert Grape? I am. <laughs> on his yacht. <laughs> My girlfriend is older than I am and she does make more money than I do too. And people ask if that bothers me because that's typically the man's role. And it doesn't bother me the same way it doesn't bother her when I ask stupid questions during movies. <laughs> <laughs> like when a building blows up, I like to ask, did that building just blow up? <laughs> or, hey, 
I know you and I are watching the same exact movie, and the movie hasn't told us who this guy is, so there's no way you can know who this guy is. But, do you know who this guy is? Did the director send you an email before the movie started? You know I don't understand English. No, no, it's a good thing she makes more money than I do, because I am not good with money. Back when we got those stimulus checks, I had bills to pay, then I bought a mattress. <laughs> and those bills still aren't paid, but I sleep like a baby anyway. <laughs> she was like, why didn't you buy me something with all that money? I said, well, the mattress is a 10-year warranty. If it's not working out at year nine, I can get a new mattress. <laughs> if you and I don't work out, I'm gonna have to get a job. <laughs> Uh, are there any cat people here tonight? Yep. I can smell you from here. <laughs> Do you have kids? Good. I don't think anybody should have to grow up thinking it's normal for a house to smell like that. <laughs> if you grew up with cats and you don't think your house smelled, just know every time you went to a friend's house, you gave their mom an asthma attack. <laughs> My girlfriend has a cat, and I actually do appreciate the little guy, because on some nights, one pussy's just better than the other. <laughs> some people think that joke is about me fucking my girlfriend's cat. <laughs> Which I would never do. Not without consent. <laughs> I like having the girlfriend. I don't really miss dating. Women are hard to understand. I went on a date with this girl, and I asked her if she wanted to go back to my place, and she goes, I don't do that on the first date. I don't want to get an STD. I was like, you just let me finger you in a movie theater. <laughs> Those places are dirty. No matter what, you should probably get tested. Also, that movie had Charlie Sheen in it. I'm gonna get tested too. <laughs> Women like to plan ahead, which we're not good at, guys. Uh, my friend set me up with her friend Lisa, and after one date, she asked me if I could picture myself marrying Lisa. I was like, I don't even know what I'm having for dinner tonight. <laughs> also, did you talk to Lisa? Did you ask her if she wanted to marry me, the guy that did a bunch of cocaine and passed out on her couch? <laughs> Cocaine to me is like those vegan cauliflower chicken wings. <laughs> I've never bought them myself. <laughs> but if you're offering, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna eat. Probably the whole bag. <laughs> then pass out on your couch. These next couple of jokes are about dating apps, and if you never had to use a dating app, I'm sure you're very happy, and go fuck yourself. <laughs> I think people should treat their dating profiles like their job resume. Lie. I lie about my height. I'm 6'4", but I bring it down to 6'3", because I don't want people to think I'm a freak. <laughs> like everything else on our phone, dating apps give us instant gratification. We need to know immediately whether or not we want to spend time with someone. So now if I ever meet someone in person, I just ask them all these icebreaker questions. What's your favorite TV show? Describe your perfect weekend. Are you addicted to anything? <laughs> and if your answer to any of those questions is The Office, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to put you down. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. There's just way too many of you. And you're not nearly hot enough to be that boring. <laughs> That's our problem, isn't it, guys? Women are never hot enough. We expect them to be perfect, even though we're the furthest thing from it. A guy told me he stopped talking to a girl because she started gaining a little bit of weight. And I was like, you have the Domino's Pizza app on your phone. <laughs> also, Dad, you're the one that got her pregnant. <laughs> He still talks to my mom. 
I don't like it, but. <laughs> we like to say we don't know what women want, but that's just because we don't listen. As long as I've been alive, it's been made very clear that what women want is for men to shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I'm doing great. <laughs> Take it from me, guys. Every time you don't get laid, it's because of something that came out of your mouth. <laughs> and ladies, I get it. Nothing makes my pussy drier than hearing about whatever the fuck an NFT is. <laughs> Being a guy's like taking the SAT. You get points just for showing up. <laughs> but every time you say something stupid, your score goes down. When I got up here, you might have thought I was cute. When I'm done, I promise, I'm gonna be a negative three. <laughs> a lot of women think the only thing men want is sex, but we're actually much, much simpler than that. Ladies, the only thing your man wants is for you to cook for him, clean for him, suck his dick, do his laundry, laugh at his jokes, don't forget to hit the gym, give him a kid that can throw a spiral. <laughs> And for the love of God, please stop talking while he's watching TV. <laughs> yeah, the guys that like that joke ride a very fine line between understanding the sarcasm and being a gigantic piece of shit. <laughs> now, I know, I'm a male comic, I have jokes about women, but I also make jokes about men, and I'm gonna be honest, guys, much bigger pussies about it. <laughs> Why you gotta say that stuff, bro? You know not all men act like that, bro. If you're a reasonable person, you know that the generalizations we make on stage never apply to everybody, and they're almost always one half of a double standard. Women like to say that men are bad at communicating, but they invented the silent treatment. <laughs> men call women sluts and whores, but they'll try to fuck anything with a heartbeat. <laughs> so for this next joke, I'm just gonna replace the word woman with the word man. So for example, if I were to say, I made plans with this woman and she was late, what I'm gonna say tonight is I made plans with this man and he was late because men and women can both be late. Bad behavior is not gender specific. Is everybody on board? Yeah. Okay. Here's a joke. Every man. Every man that I've hooked up with in the past year. Every man that I've hooked up with in the past year has had a shaved pussy. <laughs> Fellas, shaved or not, I'm gonna eat your ass. <laughs> because I treat others the way I wanna be treated. <laughs> it's the golden rule. It's why I'm a dick, because I love bitches. <laughs> I do, I don't know why, maybe it's because all my sisters are cunts. I'm not a psychologist. <laughs> you want your significant other to fit in with the family, you know? <laughs> my girlfriend, she's not very nice. She told me if I get fat, she's gonna break up with me. I was like, babe, we're at a Walmart, keep your voice down. <laughs> they might hear you and run you over with their scooter. <laughs> I used to be fat, and then when I told social media that I was gonna lose some weight, they started hitting me with all their catchphrases. They were like, no, don't do that. You're perfect. Don't listen to the doctor. You just need to love yourself. <laughs> listen. <laughs> I'm all for body positivity. If you're happy in your own skin, I'm happy for you. But with all due respect, I'm a guy, and heart attacks run in my family. I can't afford to love myself. <laughs> I need to be very critical of myself, or it's gonna be, hey mom, what happened to grandpa? Oh, he died when he was 50 because he loved himself so much. <laughs> 
And yeah, I do think people on the internet are a little silly. When it comes to climate change and vaccines, they can't shut up about how we need to trust the science, which I agree, trust the science. But as soon as the science says that maybe you should think about losing a little bit of weight, suddenly a lot of people want to do their own research. <laughs> now science is a big bad bully. When I was fat, my friends called me Fat Gabe. Guess what? <laughs> Bullying works. <laughs> For the record, I don't care what you look like, in shape, out of shape, if you make a genuine effort to live a healthy lifestyle, good for you, because that's not easy. But if you go to the grocery store and you fill your entire shopping cart with cases of Diet Coke, I am legally obligated to call Child Protective Services. <laughs> and if you don't have kids and all that Coke is for you, maybe we should beat you with a stick. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised your ankle monitor even lets you make it to the soda aisle. <laughs> and no, I don't think I'm better than these people. I know I am. <laughs> I floss and they don't. <laughs> some of you laughed because you agree with me, but some of you are also like, fuck this guy. <laughs> and that's okay, because we already got your money. <laughs> I had to talk to a door-to-door -door salesperson, which is worse than a telemarketer, because when you're talking to a telemarketer, you don't even have to stop jerking off. <laughs> he wanted to sell me a doorbell with a video camera in it. I was like, no way, dude. My girlfriend already thinks I'm cheating on her. <laughs> Let's not hand over the evidence. <laughs> And relax, I don't actually cheat, okay? I'm not the Astros. <laughs> yeah. We got some baseball fans in the house. For those of you that don't know, the Houston Astros are a baseball team that got caught cheating. They were banging on a trash can to let their batters know whether or not they should swing at the next pitch. If I heard about that growing up, would have made watching porn a lot easier. <laughs> Hey, Mom, next time you want to come into my room, bang the shit out of this trash can so I know you're coming. <laughs> yeah, I got walked in on once. She screamed, that's not what real sex is like, and then left the room. <laughs> Beginning and end of my only sex talk. <laughs> That's not what real sex is like. I was like, yeah, I know. That's not my real stepsister either. <laughs> so this guy's trying to sell me a doorbell. <laughs> and he asks if I have a security system. I go, yeah, dude, I keep a baseball bat right next to the front door. Look at me. I didn't even make my high school team. I sounded like a douchebag. I might as well have been like, yeah, bro, I got my fucking security system right here. <laughs> I sent him on his way, and then I realized I should have told this dude I keep a gun in the house because I just told a complete stranger that I do not have a security system. <laughs> That's how they get you. That's how they got the Native Americans. Oh, you guys don't have any guns? <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> We're gonna take all your shit and kill almost all of you, but don't worry, we'll name our baseball team in your honor. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it in topical, but when you hear it out loud, you realize how stupid it is, right? <laughs> to get upset that they changed the name. Guardians is a perfectly fine name. Two Jews on a bridge never hurt anybody. <laughs> From now on, if a stranger knocks on my door, I'm answering the door with a gun in my hand. <laughs> Shut that conversation down. 
Would you like to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Talk about him? How would you like to meet him, bitch? <laughs> Five dollars a box. It used to be three fifty. Now give me the thin mints and get the fuck off my plate. I do want to get a gun, but I drive drunk way too much for that. You're supposed to keep the gun and the bullets separate, but when I drink, I like the mix. I'm gonna be honest. I uh, I've never seen someone with a gun in public and thought. I'm really glad that guy's here. <laughs> no, it's cool, bro. I'm well-trained and I know how to use it. Oh, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. <laughs> there was a shooting at the basketball court down the street from my house over who got to play the next game. Someone got shot over that. And I don't care what anybody says. I was fucking next. <laughs> Gave those kids a recess they will never forget. Yeah. Dead kids, the cops weren't happy. They were like, hey, that's our thing. But Gabe, what about the good cops? They don't give you a menu <laughs> when you call 911. <laughs> Thank you for choosing 911. Your options today are a racist cokehead who beats his wife, <laughs> or actually a really good guy, cares a lot about his community, wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> well, shit, I need a little bit of firepower. <laughs> Someone's breaking into my house. Do you have a middle option? <laughs> you should think about buying a baseball bat. <laughs> Everybody calm down. All right. I know, jokes about the cops could go 50-50. I just want you to know, I don't hate your uncle. All right? I don't hate my grandma, and she still goes to church every Sunday. <laughs> Maybe I'm not making myself clear enough on that joke. It's not my grandma's fault that the Catholic Church has a long and detailed history of sexually abusing children. I just want to get that on audio. <laughs> clear her name. <laughs> Could you imagine if that happened today? It happens today. But <laughs> Could you imagine if that story came out today? All the morons on Facebook? How come the media never talks about black priests touching children? Because it doesn't happen. I don't know if you've ever been to black church, but they get their energy out. I don't know if that's true. I'm sure plenty of black priests have touched plenty of children, but I wasn't gonna fact check it. <laughs> Go ahead, when you get home, Google it. Black priest touches children. See if you're not put on a list. <laughs> I saw a Queen cover band. Pretty gay. <laughs> Pretty gay. And then I saw Third Eye Blind. I was like, oh, these guys are old as shit. How are they still together? It's because nobody knows any of their names. <laughs> as soon as one person gets more famous, it's over for the band. Lionel Richie, Rod Stewart, you didn't even know they were in a band to begin with. <laughs> Same thing happens with TV shows. I didn't know Frasier was in Cheers until I wrote this joke. <laughs> That one's for the older crowds. If you didn't get that joke, just imagine if every time you heard the name Snooky, the first thing you thought of were her small businesses. <laughs> I saw them at a music festival outdoors with a lot of grass. And I'm gonna be honest, there were a lot more wheelchairs than I expected. <laughs> and I was jealous, because it's hard to find a good place to sit down at those things. <laughs> Being in a wheelchair sucks. But if you have to be in a wheelchair, 
You might as well get front row seats. Okay, guys. They're not here. This place is not handicap accessible. <laughs> there was a mosh pit at the music festival during the daytime. That's not a daytime activity. Nobody wants to see that. Mosh pits are sweaty and uncoordinated. Somebody always takes their shirt off that shouldn't take their shirt off. If I wanted to see that, I would just move a couch with my dad. <laughs> my name's Gabe, and sometimes when I introduce myself to people and say, hi, I'm Gabe, what they hear is, hi, I'm gay. <laughs> I've experienced homophobia, but I've also experienced free drinks. <laughs> I gotta say, the more men that try to sleep with me, the more I'm coming out of your side of the fence, ladies. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of what you're seeing, and I think I'm thinking a lot of the same, too. Like, when a man buys me a drink, the first thing on my mind is, dude, if you think I'm going home with you just because you bought me a drink, you're gonna have to buy me a few more. <laughs> I don't trust men anymore. I can't, I've been harassed one too many times. My boss took me out for free drinks, and then after the drinks, he tried to come on to me. And nobody at work could do anything about it. They all kept saying, that's just how Mr. Weinstein is. <laughs> you guys remember that? <laughs> me too. The whole country gave itself a round of applause for putting away a handful of millionaires for sexual misconduct. Meanwhile, there's still a Hooters in every major city in this country. <laughs> Run by some slime ball named Rick. And let me tell you something, Rick's not in it just for the chicken wings. <laughs> he likes to grab ass, and those girls can't do anything about it because nobody has any money. Someone's gotta keep an eye on Rick. That's where I come in. <laughs> That's why every single day, I have to go to Hooters. <laughs> to keep an eye out. For the girls. <laughs> Sir, can I get you something to drink? No, that's okay. I'm just here to watch. <laughs> that's where I met my girlfriend. She was a waitress at Hooters. She got me a job, and now I'm her manager. <laughs> And if she misses one more shift, that's a spanking. <laughs> it's fine, she hits me. My girlfriend hit me this morning. She told me she had a dream that I was having a threesome with two women that weren't her. I was like, babe, that is crazy. We had the same dream. <laughs> yeah, we're at that phase in our relationship where I get pep talks in the car on the way to social events. Some alcoholics usually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Before I met her parents, she said, hey, try not to make that face you make when somebody says something that you think is stupid. I was like... <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but my mouth gets me into trouble. It always has. I got kicked out of a second grader's birthday party for saying the word fart. The dad was like, we do not use that language in this house. And I was like, you're a bad father. <laughs> what second grader wants a stand-up comic at their birthday party? <laughs> Sometimes I can't help myself. I was out with some friends and there was a woman with us who was single because all men suck. Do you guys know what trolling is? It's when you say stuff you don't mean just to piss people off. She goes, I just want a man to make me come. And I said, I think there's something wrong with you because I'm pretty sure 100% of women come 100% of the time they have sex. <laughs> she didn't like that. <laughs> My friends didn't even bother telling her I was kidding because as soon as I saw how much she hated me for that, my friends saw how much I loved. <laughs> how much she hated me for that. 
They knew it was going to be a long night. She goes, other women don't like me because they're intimidated by my looks and think I'm going to steal their man. I was like... (laughs) (laughs) Finally, she said that she refuses. Refuses to watch any movie that depicts or even mentions sexual assault. And I was like, so you're not coming over later. (laughs) I just knew she wasn't gonna hit me. That's how I was raised to correct bad behavior. If you were acting like a jackass, you got hit. By your friends, by your brother, by your sister. And then you didn't act like a jackass anymore. I was flirting with this girl and this guy came over to join us. I said, hey dude, what's up, what's your name? He goes, I'm John. I'm her boyfriend. I go, what's that supposed to mean? (laughs) Yeah, John beat the shit out of me. (laughs) Guess what? I don't talk like that around John anymore. (laughs) You don't have to coddle people. Do you know every high school football team in the state of Ohio now makes the playoffs? I don't know what you know about playoffs but they start with the best teams playing the worst teams, who are usually pretty good because they made the playoffs. Now, the kids from the one bus city in buttfuck nowhere get to play one more game against LeBron's alma mater. Yeah, that's just what that small town needs. More painkillers. A lot of whites here tonight. (laughs) LeBron's a French name. It means the brown one. And names from other countries mean something. Sophia means wisdom. Alexander means warrior. American names like Brayden, Aiden, and Michaela Ann just mean, my mom's gonna be a handful at PTA meetings. If you have ever criticized a middle-aged woman for asking to speak to the manager, I'm just gonna assume you spend way too much time online. Because they're usually pretty nice about it, but it's the racist loudmouths that get all the attention. That's why when I worked at a restaurant, I was always happy to help and never spit in anybody's food unless they called me the (laughs) N-word. We tolerate a lot of hooters, but we draw the line at racism. I was about to get off my shift and I saw this dude show up to his date, late, already drunk. And I was like, I'm gonna stick around and watch this train wreck. (laughs) He didn't disappoint. Pretty early on, I heard him say, it's cool, I can say that, I have a black friend. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what he said before that, but I'm gonna assume it probably wasn't cool. (laughs) But she bought it, the date kept going, and then he said, You're pretty funny for a woman. Doesn't sound great coming out of my mouth. (laughs) And I'm not even trying to fuck most of you. (laughs) He tried to save himself again. He goes, I would know my black friend is a woman and black women have the best sense of humor. Which as a comedian, I would agree with. One black woman laughing is worth 50 white dudes laughing. (laughs) But the girl he was on a date with wasn't a comedian, so she smacked the shit out of him. (laughs) She smacked him so hard, I thought he was gonna apologize, but he didn't, he tripled down. He goes, that's assault. (laughs) She's also a lawyer, and you're gonna be hearing from her. Does this guy think he's friends with Viola Davis? (laughs) And if he does, does he think she'd be okay with this? And has this worked for him before? All these questions were flying around my head. I had to step outside to smoke a joint. (laughs) And when I got outside, I ran into these three girls. I swear to God, their names were Rihanna, Ariana, and Nikki. Yeah, this table had gone platinum multiple times. (laughs) I get to talking to them, and I find out that it's their friend Amanda's birthday. And I was like, well, where's Amanda? They go, she died two weeks ago. 
from lung cancer. Yeah, the vibe was about as dead as Amanda. I was like, I'm gonna get out of here, but real quick, you ladies wanna smoke? I can say that, I'm friends with Snoop Dogg. From the bottom of my heart, guys, thank you so much for coming. Drive safe. My name is Gabe Gary.